Hello, I'm Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba, and this is Experiment Design in Computer Science. In this video, we are going to talk about factorial design. So let's get going. All right, so factorial designs. Many experiments will involve more than one factor of interest. Sometimes we want to control multiple independent variables that influence the response of the experiment. One effective way to explore the main effects and interaction effects of multiple factors is the factor design. In the factor design, we explore all combinations of factors and levels. Now, let's remember what is a main effect and an interaction. The main effect of a factor is the change of the response variable when we change the level of a factor. So when we change the level of a factor and we see the change in the response variable, we are observing the main effect of that factor. Now, an interaction effect between factors is the change of the ver response variable when we change the level of two factors at the same time. So if we change the vectors, the, the value of factors, two vectors at the same time, we're going to see some effect from the main effect, which is the natural change we would expect from the change of each factor, and some effect from the interaction effect, which is the change that only happens because we're changing the two factors at the same time. Let's try to work this out through an example. Imagine that an engineer wants to investigate factors that affect the electrical current of a motor. So the engineer wants to buy new motors for a chicken coop, and they want to buy a motor that is reliable, uh, that has low, um, a motor that has low energy draw. So the engineer, she wants to investigate two factors uh, regarding the, uh, the electricity demand of the motor. Factor one is the manufacturer of the motor, and we imagine that there are three manufacturers under consideration, A, B, and C. And factor two is the state of the motor, original or rewinded. Rewinded here means that the motor has been rewinded from its original situation. It's like kind of being re uh, reinitialized. So to investigate this question, the engineer will sample 40 motors from each manufacturer, 20 in the original state and 20 in the re being rewinded motors. Now, the data uh, for each motor, the engineer will measure the draw from if the ele electricity draw from each motor. Uh, in Manaba, you can see the data file motors.txt to see the data for this experiment. Now, the first thing that we want to do when we are working with a multifactorial experiment, it, a multifactor experiment, is to look at the data. So here we are plotting back box plots from manufacturer ABC for the original and from manufacturer ABC for the rewinded. We can see right away that there is a large uh, effect, a large main effect for the original rewinded factor. Now, for the manufacturer, there seems to be an effect there, but the effect is not very big. It's there. And we can see also that the effect is different for the original rewind. So there is a little bit of an interaction effect for manufacturer A and the original rewinded factor. Fact, uh, um, for the manufacturer B and C, it's not very clear if we have an interaction effect or not. So the plot suggests that there is a large main effect for the state and inconclusive effect of manufacture. It's unclear if we have interaction effects or not. So now we're going to do an analysis of these factors to try to identify whether we have uh, main effects and secondary effects. The idea of a factorial design model is if we want to do a completely randomized factorial design, we have A levels for factor A, in this case we have three levels, B level for factor B, that's B, and we're going to have N replicates for each combination. Now we have three times two, so we have six combinations of levels, okay? And we have a completely randomized collection of observation across these replicates. Now we're using the addictive effects model which is, uh, is expressed as follows. It says that for each, uh, we have, for, each fac for each effect, we have a addictive component. So we have mu, that is the main mean of everything. We have tau, which is the, F uh, the main effect of the manufacturer. We have beta, which is the main effect of originally rewinded. And then we have tau beta, which is the interaction effect of i and j. So these are any replicates of this. 
And finally, we have the residuals that are other noise factors that we are not considering at the moment. Now, from this model, we can construct new and alternate hypotheses in a very similar fashion as ANOVA. So as you can see here, depending on how you construct the model, as long as it's an additive model, we can use the ANOVA just like we used before, because we are transforming the two factors in 12 levels of a combined factor. So we use 12 levels of this combined factor in your factorial. And after that, we're going to break that down in the post hoc analysis. So the ANOVA gives us the linear model of the mean effect of each factor, state and manufacturer, as well as the interaction factor and state and manufacturer. So here we build this automatically using the AOV model builder. And we're going to have the current amperes, which is our return variable. And we, here we all have state times manufacturer. So we are putting state and manufacturer together and we are generating 12 levels from that. Now we can see that if we only consider the state, there is seems to be a very strong effect for the state variable, as we saw before in the box plot. For the manufacturer and for the state manufacturer, we have smaller effects. And now here we have like a what seems to indicate a uh, significant effect. But remember that here we are considering everyone at the same time. We want to just analyze that in separate later. And then we have the residuals. Like before, we want to observe uh, how the residuals look. So we want to do an observation of the residuals. We see that the residuals seems to be have similar uh, variances. And when we look at the normal QQ plot, we don't see any obvious uh, outliers. Okay, so we can see that for all the levels, we have about a constant um, uh, difference in the terms of error. So there is no particular level that has a much higher variance than the others. So which means that we can use here the balanced model, that the balanced uh, design that we are using here. Now. Because we saw here that there is an effect of the state and a possible effect on the state and the manufacturer, then we do a post hoc comparison. Now, the post hoc comparison, the ANOVA indicates the existence of significant effect, so we perform pairwise comparison. This is the same post hoc comparison of the ANOVA that we have been doing so far. Now, we have to choose, based on the ANOVA, which factors we are going to combine with each factors. For example, let's say that we want to compare levels 2 and 3 of factor A. So we saw that factor A um, has a higher, uh, a higher effect, and we, the factor 2 and 3 have a smaller one, and we want to see if there's a difference or not between 2 and 3 of factor A. So we do a post hoc analysis like this. And here we're going to have y2 for the and, and then join everyone else here, y3 join everyone else here, and then we can compare them to in a t-test. Um, the t-test, uh, the t, the t um, value will, can be calculated as this, and this n prime is the number of specific replicates. So here we're using everyone for the factor level 2, everyone for level 3, so we throw away the replicates for level 1 for this comparison. More generally, T0 will be the delta Y the, for the levels that we are interested, divided by 2 times MSC divided by the number of replicates. For comparison of level for interaction effects, this will be the number of observations in each com uh, combination group. And the alpha value has to be adjusted by the number of comparisons that we are making in post hoc analysis. So it's important to determine a priori which post hoc analysis we are doing to be able to do a proper discount of the alpha value. For more information about factorial design, I recommend chapter 12 of Felipe Campello, which has a derivation of these models, and chapter 6 of Peter Hoff, which has a more detailed analysis and three more examples of factorial design. So make sure to read these two materials to deepen your knowledge on this topic. Uh, thank you very much for watching this, and I see you this week, the next week for a uh, review of the course. See you there.